just as we thought. There are players becoming available that are getting cut right now. Two of them, Tony Jefferson, the safety, and Sony Michelle, the running back. I think the Eagles should jump all over it. At least one of them. here so Tuesday is coming quick you know Tuesday the day that comes after Monday well this Tuesday is very important uh, for those that don't know uh, the Eagles and the rest of the NFL have to get to the 53 man roster limit and there has been a lot of moves already not just with the Eagles but a bunch of teams and there are two guys two guys uno dos I know Spanish two guys have wiggle free that I think would fit the Eagles really well. Now, we're going to get into it in a second. But before we do that, if you're new to the channel and you like the content, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe. We deal with the Eagles and the NFL pretty much every day, 365. So you don't want to miss it. And if you've been, you know, subscribed for a while, watching my live streams, watching me melt down, watching us win ball games, just, if you've been subscribed for, just double check. Double moonwalk check. Make sure you're still subscribed. Now, before I talk about who we could get as acquisitions, I want to talk about who we just released. You didn't know I could say the word acquisitions. I even know the definition of it. That's how smart I am. I've been eating a lot of fish. I'm getting smarter. Actually, I'm not. I hate fish. But unless it's like sea fish that isn't like taste fishy. All right. But anyways. All right. I think that's a pause. But all right. So. We talked about some of the guys the Eagles have already released and waived. Uh, there's two guys that happened after the video I just did. That's why I'm putting this one out. Um, Richard Rodgers, the tight end. Uh, he's been with us for a while. He's been cut and come back quite a few times. He was released. Uh, there's a lot of people that are thinking that he may wind up being back with the Eagles at some point. It's just something that we're going to have to wait and see. My thoughts are this. Going going into to the season, or you know, going into preseason, I thought he would probably be your number two tight end. That's what I thought. But when you see him with the four stringers and things like that, I don't think that's the case anymore. I think they like Stall as a number two tight end, and then I think Calcaterra, Calcaterra, however you want to call him, I don't know. He's a cannoli eater. But you know, I think he I think he showed up enough in the last game where I'm intrigued. I have to keep him. So. I would probably go with uh, Stahl and Calcaterra, and those would be my two tight ends. Now, like I said, you have to watch guys who are wiggling free. The Bills and O.J. Howard, they're trying to move him. He could be a free agent. He could get traded. Would you bring an O.J. Howard in to be the backup to Dallas Goddard? I don't think it's necessarily a bad move, but it's got to be cheap, like really cheap. I'm not I'm not paying Buffalo. He, he, I probably wouldn't trade Buffalo for him. If he got cut, um, then I would. And the last I've heard is he was still in the roster and they were trying to move him before they cut him. So maybe they won't get anything. Um, the other guy that got released, and this one, this one hurts a little bit because I, I really like this guy. I have a lot of respect for Greg Ward. Here's a guy that comes in. He's a quarterback, comes in. He's with the Eagles practice squad for what, a few years, waits, works hard, gets his chance, and really, in a lot of ways, for a few years, was the most consistent wide receiver we had. I mean, you kind of knew what you get with him. So, yeah, he'll drop some passes, this, that, and the other, but he also made some big catches for us in some big games at the end of the year. I, I, I like Greg Ward Jr., and I hope he lands on his feet somewhere. Maybe he goes to, to Jacksonville. Maybe he goes somewhere. You know, I, we got a lot to talk about with the wide receivers. That's a whole nother topic. Uh, I'll probably do a separate video on that because this Rager thing is 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 kind of holding everything up, I think. But we'll we'll get into that later. Uh, so those two guys are are, are gone. I I'm very curious about guys like Kavon Wallace. Like, is Wallace gonna make it? Where's Wallace, String? Where's Wallace? Do you know where that's from? Probably some of you young guys don't. But if you if you're an old G and you watch good shows, you know the wire. You know the wire. One of the top three, top three favorite show of all time. I give you my top three. I'm gonna give you my top three favorite shows of all time. You ready? Here it goes. Boom. Breaking Bad. Two. 
Sopranos. The reason Breaking Bad is better than Sopranos, ending. Third, Wire. Fourth, Better Call Saul. There you go. I'm off topic, but I, I love life. I love life. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a talker. I'm a talker. All right, so now those guys are gone. And you saw a lot of moves today. There's a lot of movement with other teams. Two guys that I, I, I got to talk about that I think are very interesting to the Eagles, okay? Uh, first one, let's talk about Tony Jefferson, the safety um, in Baltimore. He, he's the odd man out, right? They're gonna, they got Chuck Clark. They got Kyle Hamilton. They, they, they got uh, a Williams from... Um, they got Marcus Williams from New Orleans. So they got safeties. He's the odd man out. Now, here's the thing. He played really good towards the end of the year when he went back to Baltimore. He had a few good years with, with Arizona. He took money, went to Baltimore. He missed a lot of years with a lot of time. He has been beat up. He has been injured. But he could be a low-risk, low high-reward option, you know, if he's cheap enough for the right price, something like that. And the reason I bring him up, right, is because uh, Tony Jefferson is... Sorry for the little glitch there. I, 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 for a second, was talking about Tony Jefferson, and I was like, did I just call him Thomas Jefferson? What the hell, man? But I, I didn't. I didn't. I called him Tony Jefferson. I was going to say, man, hey, uh, Thomas Jefferson ain't playing no football. You know what I mean? Let, let the guy write some paper and smoke some weed. But Tony Jefferson could be a, a guy that, if he's cheap, here he gives you some veteran presence. Like I said, he Baltimore was happy with the way he played towards the end of the year. Now, a lot of people also think that Tony Jefferson is going to end up back on Baltimore at some point, and this is just a cut of a veteran player, whatever you know, whatever they're doing. Uh, kind of like what the Eagles do with Richard Rodgers. But, I mean, I wouldn't mind taking a chance on him I because I really am worried about the safety position. I'm worried about the depth of safety. I'm not so sure that Kevon Wallace will not get cut. And if he doesn't get cut, he doesn't give me a lot of hope. I'm not. I don't have a lot of confidence in him. Really, I have. I like. I. I think Epps is fine. Anthony Harris is fine. But after that, I kind of worry. So he may be worth. He may be worth worth a shot. He's 30 years old, 5'11", 211 pounds. Uh, you know, he didn't play that much the last few years. That is a concern for me. Uh, you know, that's the one concern. Is he beat up? Does he have anything left? Uh, we, we we just don't know. Um, but Adam Schefter said this, Ravens are planning to release safety Tony Jefferson per source. Baltimore drafted Kyle Hamilton in round one and signed former Saints standout Marcus Williams, leaving less opportunity for Jefferson, who had a strong preseason with nine tackles in one half Saturday versus Washington. That's pretty good, nine tackles, one half. Uh, maybe he's feeling healthy, those kind of things. So so he's worth, he's worth, I think, at least, you know, at least doing your homework on, right? At least doing your homework on the other guy I want to talk about, and and this one I'm I'm I would say I'm more adamant about this one. I I'm more intrigued by this one than than the other because of the age and because of the lack of play. But uh, Sony Michelle, you know Sony Michelle. We we know his brother uh, Mark Ham Michelle, who was with our practice squad uh, what for a year and a half, something like that. But Sony Michelle, the running back, was with New England, was with the Rams last year. Went to Miami. Miami is loaded at the running back position. They're loaded at the running back position. Sony Michelle got cut. Uh, last year, he had 208, 208 attempts, 845 yards, four touchdowns, and averaged 4.1 yards a carry. He's 27 years old, and, and he's 5'11", 215 pounds. This is the perfect type complement to Miles Gainwell, that I'm talking about, like, like you know, we bring Kareem Hunt because he's the best of the bunch. But, but a guy like Sony Michelle, who I still think can play, could come in and be a nice change of pace for uh, Miles Sanders and Gainwell and stuff like that. And that's what I'm looking for—a guy like him. And remember, the Eagles cut Huntley; they only have three running backs. I personally, when I look at a 53, how I would do my 53-man roster, I think you need at least four running backs. I don't like the idea of three, because especially when you have Miles Sanders with a hamstring injury, uh, has been banged up the last few years. How can you trust that that you're going? He's going to stay healthy, uh, and let's say he doesn't stay healthy, and then you have to start putting more pressure and give more carries, more attempts to gain well on Ball Scott. Ball Scott has been hurt and banged up before too, so I I think 
Sony Michel is an interesting guy because he could come in. I think he could he could do a lot of the things Jordan Howard did for you. We watched him against us the other day. I thought he was tremendous when they played us. I thought he I thought he tore us up. So I would like to see Sony Michel come to the Eagles. Now now there's going to be other running backs that are going to be released. We got to see. But this is one option that I think is out there that that I think would be cheap. You know, your brother's known about the city. He, he can kind of give you info on it. And you could come in and you could be, you know, a compliment to Miles and Gainwell. Uh, I think it I think it would be a good thing. I mean, you, you saw the preseason games, right? Every preseason game we played this year, there was a chance for the Eagles to convert on a third and short. They couldn't do it. One was third and one at the goal line week one, I believe. They tried to run. I think they tried to run Gainwell. He didn't get it. They went on fourth down, and then they did get it, but they should have got it on third down. Week two, something similar happened. They went forward on fourth and got it. And then this week versus Miami, they tried to convert early on third down, and then they tried to do it on fourth down. They couldn't get it. You need a back that can get it. Sony Michelle, he's not 230 pounds. He's not, uh, he's not Christian Aquila. I'm not saying that. But I think he's big enough to get the job done, what you need. 215 pounds, third one, I think he can get it. I think Sony Michel is somebody that we should keep an eye on very closely because he would be a back that I think could come in and fit perfect with the Eagles. This is exactly what I'm talking about. He's not going to come in and overshadow Miles Sanders. He's not going to make Miles, uh, you know, look over his shoulder. He's not going to replace what they want to do with Kenneth Gainwell. They're still going to use him the way that they planned and how they envisioned. Uh, same with Paul Scott. He is a compliment uh, back. And I still believe that you need at least four backs. So Sony Michelle, to me, would be a great pickup for the Eagles. And, and listen, there's going to be a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of things going on, a lot of moving parts. We talked about in the last video about Andre Dillard. Uh, I don't think the Eagles will trade him. They shouldn't trade him unless they get like a first-round pick for him. Uh, but Rager, Rager's the one that's on my mind. I, I, I'll do a separate video on that because I want to talk about the wide receivers now with Greg Ward, and you still got a, a decision to make with Deion Kane and all that good stuff, and you know how it goes. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Uh, with that said, I hope you guys, I hope you guys tell me what you think in the comment section. As always, I look forward to reading it. Take care. Talk to you later. Of course, don't be a dingbat. It's how we vision. We're all just living in it. Dang. Dang, I got a lot of friends requested going off on my phone. I haven't got to my PlayStation yet, but I guess you guys want to get your butts kicked in some Madden. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Uh, if you guys haven't, I do have a PlayStation 5. If you want to, you know, maybe play a Madden game with me sometime when I'm on or whatever, uh, my my user ID there to look up is Tony Babo, T O N Y B A B O 88. That's it, Tony Babo. So look for that. That is an old nickname of mine. So look for it. Uh, and, and yeah, I'll accept you as soon as I can. We can play some football. Get Mark Holmes on there. I want to devastate him. I challenge Mark Holmes to Madden. I challenge Michael Anthony Wears Fitness to Madden. I challenge everybody to Madden because when I get going, I'm going. Denzel Washington out. <laughs>